Dennis, give us some initial reaction to Furiosa Mad Max Saga. I'm gonna have to let it sit for a while. Fury Road is a movie that is very close to my heart. Uh, Road Warrior, a film that is very close to my heart. Really like Thunderdome 2, extremely underrated. First one really good too. This might be my favorite. Might be, might be. I'll have to think on it. But it is grand. It is epic. It is a fucking amazing apocalyptic adventure. If you like the Mad Max franchise, you're gonna love this one. Big recommend. Two thumbs up. I gotta go. Bye. I fell asleep. The world is mad and we're the last people to see this movie. The last movie was definitely just like a full-on engine ride with a bunch of adrenaline. This one is a bit more of a slow burn. It builds and kind of becomes a revenge story instead of this amazing action set piece. And if you really enjoyed the world of Mad Max, then this one gives a bit more insight to the different factions kind of following a smaller little journey from the eyes of, well, in this case, Furiosa. She's taken as a child from this place of green and nature, suddenly by this biker gang and cast into the desert and were basically thrown into uh, a story of survival. It's devastating, it's harsh, it's uh, torturing to your soul at many times because who would like to live in this world? It's like the title says, it's mad, and one day I like to see a Happy Max story, but this one kind of aches back to the original trilogy where the stores weren't grandiose per se, but more smaller scale, even though you get a big sense of what the world is, and in this case, it's actually confirmed to take place in Australia. Chris Hemsworth, he's called Dementious, and he's super demented and crazy in this film. He's a really, really good actor, and Honestly, by the third act, I was very invested in his side of the story because he gave a lot of exposition about what his character was feeling, which gives more insight to the beginning if you give it a rewatch now again. So it's a shame that it took a lot of time for him to get to speak his mind and to have those interactions with Furiosa that were a bit more personal and didn't need to have all the big world building around it. But I was glad that it actually got there at a point because the last third act was probably my favorite, but when it kind of became a slasher revenge uh, story. This film is divided in different chapters and the first chapter is when Furiosa is a child. And then after that, it leads into the second act where she becomes uh, more of a young adult. And that's where it seems like a lot of people will lose some interest because it doesn't become so personal as a story. It becomes more focused on what's happening with Immortan Joe and his rivalry with the different citadels and this one mission. You have a lot of characters that have very few words to say, and that's not a bad thing. But in this case, you do want to know a little bit more what's going on in their minds. And even though if I like Tom Burke a lot in this movie as that stoic kind of character, it seems like he vanished a little bit too soon just as I kind of wanted to see more of him. So the first act, investing, second act, slow burn, third act, you got me. So that's kind of how the structure of the movie is. There was a lot of investment still, but I would say that if you're expecting this to be that rush that the last one was, lower those expectations. It's uh, get ready to kind of spend your time to be invested in a different type of story, more personal, more drama, but breathtaking all the same. But whenever they're shooting real locations, it always looks better. And on the IMAX screen, you can tell the difference when it was all digital and when it was all practical. So give it a watch. It's a good time, but be ready and be patient, all right? It's a good movie though.